In this video we have four questions. The first two are some more percentage questions following on from the last video. And question 26 and 27 introduces some questions on hourly wage, which is very, very lifelike. So four questions, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in, which is integrated in red. Question 24, again, very similar to question 23, but this time we have a percentage decrease, not an increase. So we have 25 degrees, might be the middle of the day, and it's decreased to 18 degrees at night. But we want to find out what's this percentage decrease between the, the day temperature and the, and the night temperature. So remembering the, the rule of thumb from question 23, how to do this process is we get the final amounts, in this case it's degrees, and we subtract the original. So we can go 18 degrees minus 25 degrees. This is going to be negative 7 degrees Celsius. Now, notice here that we have a negative answer. What I'm going to say here right, is the kind of the rule of thumb. We can just go 7 degrees has decreased. Okay? Because if we kept the negative 7, we could get a negative percentage answer, but I'd rather a percentage with the word decrease, because then we know it's gone down. Okay, So, I'm just going to say positive 7 has decreased. So once we know this, this change at the moment, the final step to find out the percentage decrease is this number here, 7 degrees change, and we divide by what the original amount is. So in this case, it's 25 that's what it originally was, and it changed from, from 25 to 18. Now once we have this here, we can, we can try and convert this into a decimal. Now this looks like quite a hard one, so I'm going to pull the calculator out and get a decimal answer. 7 divided by 25. Oh, 25. What's going on there? There we go. 7 divided by 25. 0.28. Right. So we've, we've converted this fraction into a, into a decimal, and the reason why we did this is because we can very easily convert decimals right, into percentages by just timesing it by 100 and putting a percentage sign. So this is going to be 1, 2, 28%. Now this is a 28% change decrease. Okay, this is important to always put this at the end, whether it's an increase or decrease. Or increase or decrease because uh, that's actually a lot of information. But and just just quickly over here, if you if you want to allow a calculator, just a reason the way to do this question is that if we want to get to a percentage, well, we convert this to a hundred, the bottom line, uh, and we times this by four, we times the top by four, so twenty eight, and then we can times by a hundred to get the same answer. So this was just in case you didn't have a calculator there, but this is what our percentage decrease is. Question 25, so this is a, a worded question, actually very similar to the questions I think 23 and 24, but uh, we're introducing the, the words profit and, and discount, or profit or loss, okay, so we're going to see these words in this question here. Alright, so a manufacturer produces and sells items for the following prices shown. So these items could be, I think this one here could be a golf ball, this one here could be a golf club, okay, so a little bit more expensive. And we want to determine whether the manufacturer makes a profit or a loss. And then once we know that, we want to express that profit or loss as a percentage. Okay? So, let's just use the same techniques we did in the, in the last two questions. So, these could seem pretty easy, but I'm just going to do it as I would do it in an exam, maybe. Alright, well the cost price was $10. So that's what cost him, the manufacturer, to produce or to make that golf ball. Right? And he sold it for $12. So to find out the, the profit or loss, we can just go to the selling price. Sell minus the cost price. Now I know this looks easy, but we might have a harder example in the exam. So our answer will be 12 minus 10. So that's $2. And because this is a positive number, what, what we can do is just say that that's a profit. Okay, so if it was a negative number, for example, it would obviously be a loss or, or a discount. So we already know that there's a $2 profit here. Now, we wanted to 
We want to express that profit as a percentage now. So we can go, well, is it $2 profit? And let's divide that by what the price was to actually make the, make the golf ball. So we can go the profit divided by how much it costs to make. Now, we want to express this as a percentage. At the moment, it's a fraction. So let's try and get it into a decimal. So we can go, well, this is the same as 1 over 5. Or as a decimal, we can go, uh, it's going to be 0 0.2. And the way I did that is, we can go, well, 2 divided by 10, 1.5. Well, 5 times 0 0.2, so 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. That's why this is here. And once we do this, we can convert that into a percentage by times it by 100 and putting a percent sign. So we can go 1, 2, shifting the decimal point sign, 20%. Now, what I could have done is, is converted this fraction to a, a percentage just by converting this to 100 by times it by 10 and times in the top by 10. So we would have got the same answer, but that's, that's how we would have done that. But uh, question B here. Now we have, it cost, it cost me $80 to, to make this golf club because I was spending a lot of time on it. But then when, when I realized when I put it at the shop, only people were willing to pay $60 for it. So I want to know, okay, did I make a profit or, or a loss there? Well, we can go sell price minus the cost price. So it's going to be 60 minus 80. So it's going to be negative $20. Negative 20, so that means that I lost $20 there. So it was a loss or, or a discount. These are the words that you might, might continue seeing in textbooks. Okay, so what I'm going to say there is there's a $20 loss. Now I want to convert that as a percentage, so I'm going to go what well, this price was, 20. Now I'm going to leave the, the negative sign just for a moment because we know it was a loss and divide that by the original price, right? $80. Now we need to convert this as a percentage, so we're going to go, well 20 goes into 21 times and 20 goes into 84 times. So as a decimal, this is well, a quarter, so 0.25. Right? And if we want to convert this into a percentage, we can just times it by 100 and add the percent sign, so it'll be 25%. Now, I, I purposely left this here as just our answers because this last step is really important. This is a 20% profit. And as you'll guess, this is a 25% loss. And that's the reason why I didn't put the negative sign there because we can put this at the end so we know that we lost money in this, in this bargain. Question 26. Now, we're looking into some really real-life examples here. We're looking at um, hourly wages. We're looking at how much you get paid per year. I'm sure you're all going to be witnessing this over the next few years as you go through school and we get a part-time job. So this is, this is very good. I like this topic. So this question here, we're looking at what... We've got two examples, and we're looking to find in each example what their hourly wage is. Now, a typical hourly wage for someone... Your age it might be, say, $16 an hour or $18 an hour. So that's what we're trying to find. And we have these two pieces of information. This person, I'm going to call this, let, let's say this is me at the top. This is John. And this, this is Jack down here. Okay, so John works 38 hours per week and he takes home $38,532 per year. Now, we're also going to assume here that John doesn't have any weeks off per year. He works 52 weeks per year. It's a bit unlucky, but that's what we're going to have to deal with. So, here's how I would go about solving it. I now have $38,530 per year, so I want to now find out how much I make per week. So, in order to do that, I have to go 38,532, and to change it to weeks, divide by 52. This is step one. Let's bring the calculator out. I'll put it down here. 38,532 divided by 52. So he makes $741 per week. And now, so we've got John's wage per week. We want to find hourly wage. And we know that each week, John works 38 hours per week. So I'm now going to divide this by how many hours in the week John works. So, finally, 741 divided by 38. 
And I was pretty correct before when I said this. I was close enough. So that is my final answer. John's hourly wage is $19.50. Let's have a look at the second one now, Jack. He works, he's a bit, bit of a slacker compared to me. He works 15 hours per week and he brings home $6,500 per half year. So he only works half the year. The other half is lying on the couch watching TV. So 6500 divided by, well, it's only going to be 21 weeks because he only works per half year. So 6500 divided by 21 is 309.5. Five, and that's per week and then he works 15 hours per week so divide this by 15 to get the hourly wage so let's go and calculate that I already have it in my calculator so I'll divide by 15 so Jack's, hour, Jack's actually hourly wage is more than me $20 and I'm going to round this to one decimal place $20.60, and this is written as uh, $20.60 per, this is like a per hour, and same up here. So, John's hourly wage is $19.50 per hour, and Jack's is $20.60 per hour. Okay, now, I've just actually realised I've made a bit of a silly error here, and you probably picked this up as I was doing it, you are probably one step ahead of me. There's not 21 weeks per half year. 52 divided by 2 is actually 26 weeks per half year. So that was my error there. So this line here is going to be different. 6500 divided by 26. So he's actually making 250 per week. So this is more like it. He's actually going to be earning less than me, which I'm quite happy about. So now let's go 250 divided by 15 is... 16 point, I'm going to round to one decimal place, $16.7 per hour. Question 7 now, we're looking at calculating the pay. So in this question we know that Jack's wage is $9.20 per hour. Um, and then we're looking to find out how much Jack's paid for his shift after he does a 3 hour shift and also a 4 hour shift at time and a half. Now, if you don't know what that means, you'll probably find out when you start doing some part-time work. If you work, say, on a Saturday or a Sunday or a public holiday, you'll get what they call, like, bonus wage or holiday wage. And that'll be a little bit extra. So Jack won't be earning $9.20. He'll be earning more like, say, $12 an hour or $13. It's a bit of a bonus for working on the weekend or a public holiday. And I'll tell you how to calculate that in a sec. Let's go to the first one. The first one's pretty simple. So he earns $9.20 per hour and he works for three hours. So how I would do this is just, not, and I've done plenty of this in my time, plenty of part-time jobs while at uni and school, times three, just for three hours. Let's bring the calculator out. So 9.2 times three. So a three-hour shift, Jack earns $27.60, which might buy him a couple of subway footlongs after his shift. Now let's have a look at the second one now. He works four hours, and let's say on a Saturday where he works time and a half. We first need to find out what his wage is on the Saturday. So how I would do it, $9.20 per hour, and I'm going to times that by 1.5. And that's how to calculate time and a half. If I was to, another way of, uh, another very, a uh, common example is double time, and that would be timesing it by two. Or triple time, if you're very lucky, maybe working on Christmas Day, you might times by three. But for this one, it's working time and a half, so you've got to times it by 1.5. Let's bring out the calculator. 9.2 times 1.5, that equals 13.8. So his new wage on the Saturday is 13.8 per hour. Might run out of a bit of room here. And he works for four hours. So I'll just bring it up here. Four times 13.8. Four times 13.8 is 50. Oh, Jack's made big money this one. $55.50. Now 
and 20 cents. So this is how much Jack earned in this shift on the Saturday at time and a half.